Are you wanting to try out some of the premium capabilities of Power Apps like Dataverse, custom connectors, and model-driven apps? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up your Power Apps developer environment with the Power Apps developer plan. This plan recently got some brand new updates, including the ability to add multiple developer environments. I'll walk you through how it works right after this. All right, so you've been hearing a lot about the Power Platform and you wanna start building Power Apps. Where do you start? Well, the answer is the Power Apps dev plan. I'll put the link in the video, but if you go to aka.ms forward slash power apps dev plan, that'll take you here to the developer plan sign up page. So this plan right here will give you a free developer environment for testing the premium capabilities of the power platform. Now, the first area that I see a lot of people get hung up here is in the sign up for the developer plan is it does require a work or school email. And what do I mean by work or school email? I basically mean you need a Microsoft 365 license. So you're not gonna be able to go sign up with a Gmail or a .gov. The email that you have has to be backed by Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory for you to be able to sign up for this program. So if you already have an email address that includes licensing to Microsoft 365 through your work or school, then you are half of the way there. Now, a lot of you might say, I don't actually have access to a work or school email with Microsoft 365 access. This could either be because you're a student and you don't have access to that, or maybe you do have access to Microsoft 365 through your company, but they are locking down signing up for this plan. Sometimes you'll see errors if your company locks down creating new developer environments like this, depending on the policies that they have. So regardless of the reason, if it's your company blocking it or you just don't have access to a Microsoft 365 account, that doesn't mean that you can't start developing on the Power Platform and testing out the capabilities if you wanna learn. It just means you have to do one additional step, and that's to sign up for the Microsoft 365 developer plan that gives you a Microsoft 365 tenant, which you need to be able to develop on the Power Platform, which you can then go and add this Power Apps dev plan on top of. So the Power Platform runs in the context of Microsoft 365. So you can go to aka.ms forward slash m365 dev plan, and that will take you here to the Microsoft 365 developer plan, which you can go through the sign up process by clicking join now and getting a free Microsoft 365 tenant. Now I already have one, so that's why it's giving me this message here, but you just go through a pretty simple sign up process here to get that license. So that's the one additional step you need if you don't already have access to Microsoft 365 where it's locked down. But after you have that, now you can go back to the Power Apps Dev Plan and just select the existing user Add Dev Environment. This will give you a free premium environment that you can use. Now, traditionally with this Dev Plan, it gave you a single premium environment, which was cool, but if you wanted to do some more advanced things like testing out solutions, which are a way for us to package up our individual Power Platform assets, like maybe an application along with a workflow and a dashboard that makes up the holistic solution and move that between different environments to maybe test things like the uh, application lifecycle capabilities that the Power Platform offers. We weren't able to do that with this license because we need multiple environments that are premium to do that. But now we have the capability to do exactly that. We can actually get three premium environments now as part of this Power Apps developer plan. So I'm logged in here with this account. And if I wanna create multiple developer environments, what I can do is go to admin.powerplatform.com and click on the environments tab. And there right here now, you see that it finally provisioned, that is my Power Apps dev plan environment. That was just provisioned for me by signing up for that plan. But again, this is just a single environment. What if I want more? Once I'm in the admin center in the environments tab, I can select the new button and we'll see a new type of option in the type dropdown for developer. So this will allow us to create other developer environments so we can get the whole experience. So I might create another environment called David Prod. So this would be my production environment that I might deploy to. So we'll click next to get that set up and that will go through the provisioning process. I can select my language and the region and all that. And I put pro instead of prod, but we're gonna roll with it. And we'll do one more, we'll click new and we'll select the developer type here and we'll call this David test. You can select the region dropdown and have different regions for these developer environments as well. So now without me having to actually pay for any additional licensing, 
just by signing up for that developer plan and coming here to the Power Platform Admin Center and adding in those additional environments, I have three premium environments that I can use to be able to test the full functionality of Power Apps. Now this ability that we're seeing here to have these three environments has been in the making for a while. We've all been wanting it to be able to truly test out the complete functionality of the platform. So I'm super excited to see this in here. Now, if you're an IT pro and you're responsible for managing the Power Platform in your org, you might be panicking a bit now because let's see, three environments per user. If you have a lot of users in your tenant, you might be thinking that's a lot of different environments to manage and you're a little bit concerned. So while we're here in the admin center, I'm gonna show you in case you need to, how to actually disable this feature. So I'm gonna to switch to my admin account and we'll go here to the settings tab in the admin center. And we'll see this option here for developer environment assignments. So we'll select that. And then we have two toggle options. So the default, we can leave it to everyone that can do this, or we can choose only specific admins to be able to restrict that. So everyone is not able to create these developer environments. Now, adversely, if you aren't an admin, if you're a user and you're wanting to follow along with this tutorial and create your multiple developer environments and you're not seeing the option, then this is most likely the reason why is it has been locked down in your tenant. So you might reach out to your IT team and ask if you can have an exception or what the policy is there. So just a few other things that are important to know about these new developer environments. As far as capacity, you're going to get two gigabytes of data storage per environment. Now you might think that's a little bit low, but again, these are meant for testing and dev. You're not going to be hosting a lot of applications in here. So that's pretty decent storage. And also I wouldn't really jump to turning these developer environments off tenant wide because they do have some built-in governance where if they haven't been used for 90 days, they will automatically clean themselves up. So from a maker side who's wanting to be able to test out the capabilities, you see how powerful this is because I now have these three environments to test and it only took me a click of a button to get going with this. Now let's see what we can do with these three new environments. So if we go back to make.powerapps.com and give a little refresh, now we can select the environment tab in the upper right hand side and we'll see our three environments here. Now, another new thing, if you have used the Power Platform before that you might notice is this whole environment section has been cleaned up quite a bit. So if you're using this in an organization that's already rolled out the Power Platform and maybe you have a ton of different environments, now we're able to search for an environment and filter based off of if this is a developer environment, sandbox production, and even your role in that particular environment. So if you look in this environment now, we'll see that I have full access to Dataverse. So I can go into the tables tab and I'm actually able to create a new custom table using this premium capability. Now I can do all the great Dataverse-y type stuff that I want to and test that out here. I can even test out virtual tables, which if you didn't see, I had a video on that a couple weeks back that walks you through what those are and how to use them. And even do things like testing out custom connectors. So if I have an API that doesn't already have a connector that I want to connect to, I can do that here. And of course, build model-driven apps based off of this data and test out solutions. So that's a really great thing about this plan is I'm able to test out all of the premium functionality of the Power Platform with that ALM capability to be able to make sure that I'm able to move what I build across different environments successfully. And this doesn't use up any Dataverse capacity either. So I don't have to worry about eating up and using Dataverse capacity when I'm testing out and using these developer environments. There is actually another way that I thought I would highlight and mention that you can get this Power Apps developer plan. If you do have access to Visual Studio Dev Essentials, if you go into your portal there, you will have a Power Apps developer plan license that you get as part of those benefits as well. And this license here also allows us to test out the premium capability with inside of Power Automate as well. That uh, is limited to 750 runs per month. So keep that in mind when you're using this for testing Power Automate's premium capabilities. So that's what it does include. Now let's talk about what this will not get you. 
So speaking of Power Automate, this will give you access to test the premium Cloudflow features, but it won't give you any RPA credits or licensing there. So you'll still need to utilize any trials or pay for additional licensing if you want to use some of the RPA functionality. It also won't give you any AI Builder credits. So if you wanna test out AI Builder, you're best off using that free trial that they have that pops up when you're in AI Builder and give that a try to test out some of those capabilities. And it doesn't include any Dynamics 365 licensing either. And as far as does this expire? So the general thought is as long as you are consistently using it, it won't expire. There is that 90 day expiration. So if it's inactive for 90 days, you will get a message as the owner that it will be deleted if it's not used. So that's your cue to kind of go in and do something in your environment again to show some usage. Otherwise it will be automatically deleted. And if you build something really cool inside of your developer environment here, and you wanna move it over to your default environment or whatever environment that you use inside of your organization, that's when you would leverage solution. So you can easily go into the solutions tab here, package up all of your Power Platform assets that make up your solution into a solution file, export that and move that into your other environments. All right, well, I think I just about covered it all. Hopefully I gave you a good overview of the Power Apps developer plan and pointed you in the right direction to getting started to test out some of these premium Power Platform capabilities. All the links that I mentioned in this video will be provided in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, check out some of these other Power Apps videos.